Are you struggling with sin? Repeating sins? Does it seem like no matter what you do, it feels like you cannot overcome? Well, don't give up hope just yet. You see, Paul reminds us in Philippians 4 and verse 13 that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And Jesus himself said that without me, we can do nothing. So my friends, the key to victory is to team up with Jesus daily. You see, he is ready and more than capable of transferring that overcoming power to you so that you can live your best life and be your best self every day. So, submit to God, resist the devil, and God promised that he will flee from you. And remember, to him that overcome it, Jesus will make a pillar in the temple of God. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Ah, we can do better than that. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Yes, are we happy to see each other this morning? Yes, we haven't, well, some of you, I haven't seen you, I would say, all week. And some of you, it's been longer than a week that I've seen you. And it is good to be here this morning to see all of us in the house of the Lord, where we can meet, greet, and worship and fellowship together in the name of of our Most High Father. And for those who are viewing with us online, we say happy Sabbath to you also. And welcome to Power this morning, Paradise Online Worship Experience. If you're new with us, we we are happy to have you. If you've been with us Sabbath after Sabbath, we are happy to have you again with us. And we hope that as we all worship together this morning, that we will receive the blessings that our Father has in store for us. Amen. The church is now called to worship. Let us stand. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. 1 Corinthians 16 verses 8 and 9. We will now have the affirmation of faith and we will use this morning... Revelation 16, sorry, Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7. That's Revelation 14. And if we know it from memory, we repeat it from memory. Together, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea and the fountains of water. The doxology.
us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning for allowing us this privilege and opportunity to be in your courts today. Father, we know that as we sit here in wait of your blessings, that you will not disappoint. So we pray, O oh God, that you give us receptive hearts and minds. And Lord, as we sing praises unto you, and as we read your word, and as we listen to your spoken word, we pray, O oh God, that you would pour out a blessing upon us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And at this time, you may have your seats as the praise team. leads us in to worship. Amen, and it's so good to see all of God's children together. And let everything, everyone who have breath this morning, we're going to praise the Lord with this wonderful song. Lord, you are most precious than silver, as the day panted, and worthy is the Lamb. Let's blend our voices as we sing praises to all.
adoration, we speak of the realms of the bliss. For This time we will take the reading of the word, which will be done by Sister Skylar Francis. And today our scripture of meditation is taken from Matthew chapter 13. And we'll read together verse 45 and 46. Happy Sabbath, everybody. And the scripture reading says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking godly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of the great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The scripture reading ends. Amen. And at this time, we'll invite Brother Lennox Brown to take us to God's throne, and after which Sister Malcolm would do the morning's offering.
possible kindly kneel as we lift our hearts in prayer for those who are at home and online you can assume a prayerful position as you be part of the prayer as well let us all kneel where possible Gracious Father, which art in heaven, we thank thee for another Sabbath. We thank thee for the last six days of toil and labor. Lord, you have been good. You have kept us safely through another year. And we say thank you. What a God we serve. You love us. For in the midst of all that was going on, you kept us. And even for the victory over any sins in our lives and all the good things you've entrusted to us, we have food, clothing, shelter. You provided opportunities, and we say thank you. And even for in our lives, our loved ones, we thank thee for them. But most of all, we thank you, our Heavenly Father, for you made it all possible. And so this morning, we come at your footstool, asking you to forgive us of any sins in our lives, and to be with those who may not be well. You know them. Father, minister to them this morning, for you are the great physician. For those who are troubled, Lord, give them hope. Give them courage. Strengthen their faith. And keep them this morning. Remember our community here in Vermont and the valley. Oh, Lord, we pray that you may be with the citizens. And where there is strife, where there is indifference, where there is unrest, oh Lord, may you take control. Remember the crusade that's taken place in Leua this day. Be with your manservant as he presents your word light, night after night. Use him mightily to proclaim this everlasting gospel to a dying world. And to those who are invited, Lord, bring them. And to those who, with whom we have studied, Lord, may you move on their hearts and help them to accept you before time changes to eternity. Be with the other crusaders as well and all the evangelistic program, even the one in New York conducted by the president of the conference. As your word is being presented, may it not go void, but may it find lodgment in the heart of men and women. For we truly need you in these times as we see the turmoil in the world, the difficulties and challenges that are facing millions. Oh, Father, be with us. Give us strength. Give us hope. And remember the one whom you have commissioned to present your word even in Vermont at this time. Lord, may you grant that person the unction of your Holy Spirit. And as the word comes to our hearts, may it find lodgment and give us hope to accept and to live according to your principles and your precepts and your example. And we thank you today for what you will do for us. In Jesus' name. Hear a prayer, O
We will now worship the Lord with our tithes, offerings, and gifts. The spirit of prophecy says, The goods that we handle are not our own. And never can this fact safely be lost sight of. We are but stewards and on the discharge of our obligations to God and man depend both the welfare of our fellow beings and our own destiny for this life and the life to come. The deaconesses will now wait on us for our tithes, offerings, and gifts as a praise team. Our God is a loving being. There is nothing that can separate us from the care and support of the Creator. And while we are not forced to love God back, our attitude while we serve, obey, and worship is noticed by the Lord. For example, in the book of Revelation, the Lord did not reproach the church of Ephesus of any wrongdoing. He even mentioned their good actions. However, one thing was missing. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Without love, obedience is of no value in the eyes of God. In contrast, Jesus says that when obedience flows out of love, our joy will be complete. The story is told of a man who was a great provider for his family. Every month, on payday, he would purchase everything that his wife and sons needed. This family lacked nothing except a happy father. Once, one of his sons questioned him, Dad, why did you do all this for us? His answer was, I am legally married to your mother, and you are my dependents. It is my responsibility to provide for you. It wasn't the answer the boy was expecting, and later in life, he understood why the father was so sad when everyone was enjoying the things he provided for them. Obligations and responsibilities had replaced love. Why do we give to the Lord? Many factors can lead us to participate in tithing and giving promise, regular and systematic offerings. Nevertheless, the Apostle Paul speaks about an attitude that pleases God. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. But how to become cheerful givers? It is only through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that we are enabled to do what is right and at the same time to enjoy it. Those who do not find that joy have the privilege to ask for it and it will be given to them. Our God is looking for cheerful givers and we grow as cheerful givers when we are motivated by God's love for us. This week, as we worship with our tithe and promise, may it be in response to God's extravagant love. May we put our desires last and God first. We all the tides into the storehouse. have returned our own in tithes, offering, and gifts. And with these tangible things, we have returned ourselves to you. Use all for your name's honor and glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath again to everyone. All right. So I have a little exercise for us to do. And I would like for us to participate as much as it is possible. Now you're sitting, everybody, 
for the most part, you're sitting next to someone. Now, I want you to turn to the person that you're sitting next to and tell them something nice. But don't make the other person hear. Nobody else should hear what you tell them. So just tell them something nice, whether you're giving them a compliment or something, whatever. You just tell them something nice. Amen. Now, you know what I observed? I saw teeth. So the faces were smiling, and I am certain that whatever it is that was whispered into your ear, that it would make you feel good this morning on the Sabbath. Amen? Amen. And so we want to also welcome those who are joining with us online this morning. We say happy Sabbath to you, and we trust and hope that your week was not so bad, but if it was, we pray that today, worshiping with us today, would be, you know, the ultimate blessing to you this morning. Now, today to bring us the word is none other than Elder Hollis Brown. He's no stranger to us. Uh, for those who may not know, he is a theology graduate from the University of the Southern Caribbean. He's a man of God. He loves the word. And I know that the Lord would have given him a message to bring to us this morning. And I trust and hope that we will receive it with open hearts so that our lives can be changed and so that we can also help someone to know Christ even better. But before he comes, we invite Sister Roseanne Thompson to bring us that word in song. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Are you tired of chasing pretty rainbow? Are you tired of spinning round and round? Wrap up all the shattered dreams of your life. And at the feet of Jesus, lay them down. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. Had a dreams, wounded heart, broken toe. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus, and He will turn your sorrow into joy he never said you on easy sunshine he never said there'll be no rain he only promised a heart full of singing that's the very thing that once brought pain. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams, wounded heart, broken cross. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. Turn your sorrow into joy. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams, wounded heart, broken cross. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. 
and he with his sorrow into joy and he will turn your sorrow into joy and he will turn your sorrow into joy Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's always a delight to be in God's house where we can worship him in the beauty of holiness on the, his Sabbath day, on the day in which the Lord himself has made and he has set apart so that he can romance with his creation. For those who don't honor this Sabbath, they are missing out on a lot. I can tell you that because it is the day that God himself has set aside so that he can meet with his children. I trust that your week was good. Even if it was not, it's always nice to be in God's house because in the presence of the Lord is always fullness of joy. And at his right hand, pleasures for how long? Forever and ever and ever more. And so while we are on earth, pleasure is going on. And so God is saving up most of it for when we reach to heaven. Woo! Can't wait to get there. Amen? Yes, so our message today is caption that pearl. That pearl. Would you turn with me in your Bibles to the book? Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to focus verses 45 to 46. Now, many of us may not realize that the book of Matthew, particularly a large portion of it, focuses on the kingdom of heaven. And I'll show you, even in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, yeah? yours is the kingdom. Even in the same book of Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom. And throughout most of Jesus' ministry, he focused on the kingdom. And so in our text of focus, Matthew chapter 13, we are going to come into contact with the term, the kingdom of heaven. But you will realize, ladies and gentlemen, brethren, that our text of focus starts by saying again Matthew 13 45 46 again the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it and so I was investigating the text. And I asked, why did Jesus said again? Would you join me in prayer? Holy Spirit, speak now through me. Anoint me with exousia. Anoint my tongue with dunamis. And let the words that I speak, God, be from your throne to us, your children, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you study this particular chapter, Jesus was teaching about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man sowing seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who plants seed and the enemy come and sow tears. He went on further by saying, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure. And then he said, again, I'm saying to you, if you don't understand, the kingdom of heaven 
is like a merchant man. So throughout that entire chapter, Jesus was focusing on the kingdom of heaven. So there seems to be something of interest regarding the kingdom of heaven. And so our message today is simple. In our, or in spite of our deficiency, in spite of our imperfection, note this, God treasures us as his pearl of great price. Therefore, we likewise must seek his pearl of great price. So we're going to understand and find out today what that is. So in spite of our deficiency and imperfection, God treasures us as his pearl of great price. And we too must seek his. Now I love the way the Christian Standard Bible puts it. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a rich man or a businessman looking for fine pearls. When he found one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. Brethren, ladies and gentlemen, it was the American civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King, who said, if a man has not found a cause for which to die, he is not fit to live. Are you listening? This suggests, ladies and gentlemen, if there isn't a just cause, if there isn't a noble purpose, what your life, what sacrificing, then life is meaningless. And so that is why many people work for years with a particular company. Hello? That is why, young men, that you will walk miles just to see her. That is why many will go beyond measure to obtain their pearl, their goal. Children, that is why parents sacrifice self. That's why parents sacrifice comfort just for you. That is why successful business owners, that is why successful students will sacrifice hours and sleep and hit the book so that when CPA comes and when CSEC comes, they can pass with distinction. You got to put in some time for the pearl of your price. Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to recognize when we want something really bad, when we want something so bad, we will go all out to get it. Am I speaking the truth? Oh, yes. When you want something so desperately, some will even die to get it. And so in this sin tarnished world, our problem is this. We do not value or see those things that God declared precious. Except we can attach monetary value to it. Can I say that again? We do not see the things that God declares as precious unless we humans can attach monetary value to it. That is why you find today in marriages, except somebody making plenty money, marriages crush. Because the marriage is based on the... That is why today the families are neglected. That is why the Sabbath is overlooked. That is why God is pushed in the back. That is why eternal life and the kingdom of heaven seems to be the least interest in the world. Because if it doesn't have in our mind a monetary value, we don't count it. And so that is our problem. We judge things precious based on the monetary value that we assert to it. But brethren, this is the compounding situation to the problem. Whatever we value, whatever we see as valuable, we are only interested in the finished product. What do you mean? Many of us, we dread the hard work. Oh, I want to pass my exam, but you don't want to study. Hello? You want to get your own business. You want to build your own house, but you don't want to work and sweat. 
You want to attain the price, but you don't want to put in the effort. You don't want to toil. You don't want to labor. You want somebody to hand it for you. To bring it and put it in your lap. Hey, take this. We dread the hard work and the labor. But I've come to recognize, ladies and gentlemen, brethren, there is no doubt that we give attention, we put in effort in what matters most to us. True? Am I speaking the truth? Yeah. We give attention to what matters most to us. And so if something is important to me, I will give it more attention. What do you mean, preacher? You see, when we love someone, when we love something precious, we will do all that we can to protect it. Am I speaking the truth? We will do all that we can to preserve it. Not only that, but we will do all that we can to add value to it. You see, I've come to recognize that those, young people, listen, those breathtaking pearl that you see, young lady, you see that diamond ring that that man is going to propose with? You see those pearls that you see dangling in the showcases? Do you know that they were not that precious before? No, they were not precious. Somebody, ladies and gentlemen, took the time to melt it. Hello? Somebody took the time to grind it. Somebody took the time to labor and to sweat and to polish it and to carve it and to fashion it so that it can take your breath away. Hello? So those beautiful pearls that you see dangling in the showcases, somebody put in the effort to make them priceless. Ladies and gentlemen, brother, in this morning, I step by to tell somebody that God values us. Hello? God values us. And because he values you and he values me, God is taking the time to add value to our lives. He's taking the time to polish, hello somebody, to polish you and to varnish you and to cut off certain places on your life and to help refine you into his pearl of great price. You see, God's purpose is this. He can put you on his showcase before the world. That's why he says, let your light, hello, let your light so shine that men will see your good works and glorify him. God wants us to be his pearl, to show forth who he is, what he is like, and what he is inviting people into. But hear this. God does not value or evaluate how humans evaluate. What do you mean? You see, man look on the outward. Am I speaking the truth? Yes, we look on the outward, but God looks on the inside. And see, God's evaluation system is like this. In Isaiah chapter 55, in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, the Bible says, God saying, my thoughts are not yours. Hello? My ways are and not yours, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My valuation system, my, the way I evaluate life is far higher than how human, or oh, I heard Ellen White says, higher than the highest human thought can reach, is God's ideal for his children. Godliness is not money, you know. Hello? God doesn't evaluate by money. Godliness and God likeness, that's the goal. Hello, somebody. That is the goal. It's not the money or the amount of property or estate or subjects or degrees. No, that's not how God value. God is adding value to our life so that we can reflect godliness and God likeness. That is the goal to be reached. And so, as far as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts higher than yours. And so I come to realize, Brother Amran, they tell me that one man trash is another man's treasure. Mm -hmm. One man trash is another man's treasure. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren, as sinners falling from the estate of God, we usually prefer people, we would accept people, Ella Malcolm. When they are loving and kind to us. Hello? Am I speaking the truth? Yes. When people call you out. When people start rebuking you. You scrub your face. Me not like him. Me not like she. When folks hold you to account. 
Paul say, would you make me your enemy because I tell you the truth? Yes. When people tell you, you're wrong. You vex with them. Huh? As sinners, we prefer people who are nice to us, who are gentle with us. We affirm and approve them. But not so with God. Hello? Not so with God. When we were strangers, when we were enemies of God, when we all turn our backs on him, when we curse God, hmm? as sinners, we were messed up in sin. We are all condemned. Not only that, but we are all in the gutter, marred by sin, rejected in the universe, trashed by Satan, buffeted by the fallen angels. We were nobody, rejected by all men. Hey, as messed up sinners, rejected by the devil, wallowing over more, as rebellious, as stiff naked as we are. Jesus, hello somebody. Jesus left the splendor of heaven and the glory and worship of angels and he came looking. He came looking for goodly pearls. He came looking for human beings. But what did he find? What did Jesus find when he came to earth? Mess. Our righteousness was as filthy rag. All of us were like filthy rags. We were trash, but God saw treasure. Hello, somebody. While we were like trash, God saw treasure. And Jesus, like this goodly man, like this merchant man, leave all. Jesus left the glory of heaven, the worship of angel, and come for trash. He came for us a sinner like me. Worth nothing in the universe. And he gave it all. When he saw me in the drost. When he saw me in the mud. Jesus, hallelujah, came from the uppermost. He came down to the guttermost to save me to the uttermost. Would he say amen for Jesus? And so we were in our filth and in our mess. What do we do with mess? Come on, what do we do with filth? We throw it away. We throw it away. But Jesus didn't throw us away. Praise God. He didn't throw us away. When we were in our filth, when we were in our mess, Jesus came in and he took us in and he polished. Woo! He washes you and he polishes you and he digs out some rough spots and he scrapes off some rough spots. El uh, uh, and he took that, that, that carver and he cut off some rough edges in our lives so that he can make us his pearl of great price. I want us to see it. Let's connect it now. Jesus declares that we are his pearl of great price. We are his priceless pearl. What did he do? Oh, brethren, we are bought. Hello. I said, we are bought with a price, not with silver or gold. God could not have put a monetary value to us. Hello? God could not have put a monetary value to us. But what we do as human, if we can't put money to it, it doesn't value. We are bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Will somebody say amen to that? God shed his blood to redeem us. So I say this morning, we are his priceless pearl. We are his priceless treasure. So Jesus left it all. Imagine that. Which one of you would leave heaven to come and pick up trash on earth? I want you to see it. Another man trash? Is another man's treasure. The world's trash is God's treasure. And that's you and I. We are his pearl of great price. And so, in the parable given of the kingdom, Jesus likened it as a merchant man. Now, understand, a merchant man is one who does business. True? Yeah, a merchant man is one who does business. And this businessman, he will buy and sell stocks, and uh, he will analyze us, the investments, and he will check the stock market, carefully examine the economy. He will diligently assess the commodities that are there. Note, all of us, even those who are looking online, and those who are looking back at this, all of us, like God, we are merchant men and women. What do you mean, preacher? You see, God has placed before us commodities of life. I place before you this day life and death. Blessing and cursing. You have to choose. 
You have to choose. We have a choice. You will agree with me, ladies and gentlemen, that when you go to buy, you don't just go to the supermarket or the grocery and just grab anything and just walk with it to the cashier. Is that how you buy? No. You would go and you would analyze and you would examine and you would check and weigh and heft. And some ladies are good at this. You will go at Jack's and you will sit there for $2 and you will go at Correa's and you will sit there for $1.50 and you will sit there for Randy's and you will sit there for $3. That, that's what you, you check. That's what a merchant man do. A merchant man is diligent. It's meticulous. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how we have to approach life. To get the best out of life, you have to be tactical. You have to plan and be strategic. Things just don't happen because you want it to happen. You have to align yourself. You have to plan, ponder, consider the market, consider the tides of life, the ways of life. What is God setting before you? What are the choices do I have to make? Because they tell me, not everything that glitter, hello? Hello? Not everything that glitters is gold. So you may think you are grabbing for gold when you're getting brass. So you have to examine carefully. We are all like this merchant man. So we have to weigh. You have to compare. You have to go other places. Here a little. There a little. Line upon line. Precept upon precepts. Until you get the true understanding and the knowledge of what God says. So note this. The merchant man is seeking goodly pearls. What kind of pearls? Come on, talk to me. What kind of pearls? Goodly pearls. It means... He is not looking for any and anything. Hello? He is looking for the best of the best. The top of the notch. The creme de la creme. He is looking for goodly pearls. Walk with me now. Picture yourself. You go in to make shopping. And you're looking for the best. He's looking for something extraordinary. So the merchant man found Many pearls. Hello? He found many pearls. Watch this now. All of the pearls are equally good. All of the pearls are equally inviting. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all equal. We are all equal in the, at the foot of the... We are all equal at the foot of the cross. We all have equal opportunity to salvation. God is not biased. God is not partial. Every one of us were bought with the same price. And every one of us will get the same price. Are you with me? Watch this now. So, the man is examining the pearls. They are all equally good. They are all equally inviting. Watch this. And they are all equally costly. But the text didn't stay there. It went on further by saying, when he had found one. Somebody say one. Even on the line. One, one. There is always that one. Hello, somebody. There is always that one. What do you mean? That one that always capture your attention. Mm. There is always that one that mesmerizes you. Yes, that's going to be the one. It makes everything else look insignificant. Have you ever gone somewhere and you see something like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it right there. That's the one. You're looking, you're looking, uh, uh, Brother Amran, when you're looking for that engagement ring, of course, you, you look at this one. Nah. So you look at it, you picture your fiance. Nah, nah, nah. You look at this one. Nah. I say, you have any more? I say, yeah, I have. So let me see. And then you see it. You see that, that diamond glittering there and you say, hmm, yeah. See this one? That's the one. That's the one. What is the price? 15,000 Nira. You ain't studying money because that is the one. It doesn't matter how much it costs. That is the one. There is always something about that one. Hello, somebody. That one that sends thrills up your spine. That one that makes you say, Wow. That one that drives you to move and to respond immediately. There is always that one. 
And so, as you live life, if you live life carefully, and you ponder life carefully, and take life step by step, you will come in contact with that one. So when a man saw that one, something happened. And this is what happened. So I asked you a question. From the parable, the question that is to be asked is this. Who bought who? Who bought who? Bible says, when a man found one pearl of priceless measure, he went and he sold all that he had. Then he buy. I want you to see the text. The last thing the man did was to buy. But before he buy, something happens. So the question is, who bought who? Now, they told me that the principle of sales is this. Unless you are buy into a city, a condition, unless you are convinced of an idea, you will not accept it. Am I speaking the truth? Yeah, that's what it is. Unless you are convinced that something will satisfy you, unless you are convinced that this thing will meet your need, you can buy it. Isn't that how it works? Yeah. So unless the man saw that pearl as fulfilling his needs and his desire and meets his expectation, he will not buy it. So ladies and gentlemen, that pearl must hold your attention. It must generate a desire. It must create a need. And then it must satisfy the need. They tell me, if you see it and you like it, what are you going to do? You're going to do you know how thieves steal things? So they pass on the road and they see Sister Matthias mango up on the tree and, and they see something in the house. So. It looks nice. That looks costly. That looks valuable. So he see it. He like it. He can come for it. That is how it, that is the principle of sales. Unless you are convinced of an idea, you are not going to accept it. And so watch this now. When the man saw that pearl, when he saw that one, the pearl bought the man. The pearl convinced the man. The pearl convict the man. The pearl satisfied the need. Ladies and gentlemen, I will let us know that pearl is the desire of ages. Hello, somebody. That pearl is the one altogether lovely. That pearl is the one whom angels adore. That pearl is the one who heaven cannot contain and the earth cannot restrain. That pearl is the one who hung on Calvary. That pearl is the one who shed his blood for you and me. That pearl is Jesus. You see, the pearl won the merchant man. Because watch this, watch this. The Bible says, when the man saw that Paul, I do not know the value of what he owned before. But the Bible says, my sister, the Bible says, the man went home and he sell all that he had. He gave away everything. So imagine Ella Francis, sell his house, sell his Jeep and all his equipment to buy something. Whatever he can buy must be more valuable Hello? It must be more costly. It must have more value than what he already possessed. Do you see it? I hope you're seeing it. That is priceless. What will make you sell all that you have now? Think about it. What in the world presently would make you give up all that you have and buy it? You're not talking about plenty, you know. Just one. He found that one. What is that one thing that will make you sacrifice your life? What is that one thing that will make you give your time and your effort and your all? What? So you're living life. What are you living life to achieve? What is worth your life? You are God's priceless pearl and priceless treasure. God cannot put a monetary value on your life. And if you and I are so valuable, what are you willing to give up for this life? What is worth your life? That God himself gave his life for you. What God is saying, that your life is more valuable than his. Do you see it? 
The merchant man sell all he had. He gave all his property. Jesus gave up heaven for you and for me. We are more valuable to him than heaven and the praises of the angels. Do you see it? I hope you see it. We are priceless to Jesus. So the question is now, what is priceless to you? Are you holding on to the world? The world is passing away. The Bible says, love not the world, nor the things of the world. I want you to get it. I want you to get it. What holds your attention? What life ideology are you buying into? So I say, if Jesus, if who? If Jesus, if eternal life, if the kingdom of heaven is not your pearl of great price, then your life is meaningless. Can I say that again? Even those who are looking online. If Jesus and eternal life and God and the king of heaven is not your Paul that is worth your life and worth sacrificing for, then your life is just a waste. Because as the song says, if you miss heaven, it would have been better if you wasn't born. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven must be our pearl. Are you getting the message? We are Jesus' pearl of great price. Jesus left heaven and came for us. He bought us. My brother, Jesus bought us like the merchant man. He gave all. Jesus rather die than to live without you and me. Question, what do you want to die to live without? Hmm? We must be willing to die than to live without Jesus. Jesus must be our pearl of great price. Why? Because earthly wealth, hello, earthly possession is not, is down, Paul said. I count it all but dross compared to eternal life, the kingdom of God. And so that's what Jesus told the rich young ruler. My son, to enter life, you must give all. Give all. And come and follow me. I am more important than your earthly possession. What does it profit you if you gain the world and lose your soul? What is your priceless pearl? What is your priceless treasure? So brother, and I encourage us, if we are living life for the sake of living, if we don't have a goal, and if our goal is not the kingdom of God, if our goal is not the kingdom of heaven, what are you living for? Think about it. We give after man sin. We give Jesus a reason to die. After we sin, we give Jesus a reason to die. We are his pearl of great price. And now Jesus is giving us a reason to live and to die. His pearl of great price, the kingdom of heaven. And so where we are today, if we are not willing to give all for the churches of heaven, that's why Jesus says, seek first. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. And again, I repeat, if we are not willing to give all for heaven, if we're not give, willing to give all for Jesus, if we're not willing to give all and sacrifice all for Christ and eternal life, then God, life, heaven, Christianity, Worship is all useless. Can I say it again? Let me say it again. If we are not willing to sacrifice, if we are not willing to die for Christ, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you have not found a cause for which to die, you're not fit to live. If God, heaven, if you're not willing to sacrifice for that, our Christianity and worship, in vain. So, here is a message that I come to an end. It is for this cause that Jesus came to die. He came into a world like that merchant man looking for goodly pearl. But instead of finding, finding goodly pearl, <laughs> he found a bag of mess. 
filthy sinners. But he didn't throw it away. He didn't throw us, throw us away. He refines us and makes us his pearl of great price. And now he says to us, I have now gone to prepare a place for you, which is your pearl of great price. So watch it, watch it, watch it communion. One of these days, it is God's intention to take his pearl of great price, that's us, to a place that he made for us as our pearl of great price. Woo! That's the gospel, you know. God came, meet mess, clean up mess, and prepare for his pearl of great price, a place that we can call our pearl of great price. So, brethren, our aim and our focus in life must be the kingdom of heaven. So, it's for this, it was for this cause that Jesus came into this world. Now, while mankind, as I close, will reject us, while a young man will reject a young lady for her flaws. Are you with me? While a young lady will watch a young man like me, handsome, tall, and not at all, and say, mm -mm, he meet my requirement, he meet my criteria, so your checklist. While we as humans will do that to each other, not God. We push people aside and reject them based on our criteria. Isn't that so? Yeah, that's how we do it. Not so with God. Hear what Ellen White says. Sons and daughters of God. Page 13. The church. The who? The church. Though enfeebled. Mm, though imperfect. With all her flaws. Huh? Though enfeebled and defective the church is. While a man will reject a woman because of her flaws. God sees the flaws in the church. Though enfeebled and defective the church it may be, it is still, hello somebody, it is still God's agent on earth on which he bestowed his supreme regard. Hallelujah. The church is still God's apple of his eyes. Woo! It is still God's pearl of great price even though we have imperfection. That's the message. In spite of our imperfection and our deficiency, God treasures us as his pearl of great price that he was willing to die for us. And he has engraved our names in the palm of his hands. He will contend for us. God said, I will fight against those who fight against you. Because he values us. Young people, if people don't put no value on you, God values you. You are priceless to him. Don't let people teach you to look like a cheap. We ain't cheap. Hello? We are not cheap. God has bought us with the blood of his holy son. So he has engraved our name in the palm of his hand. So unlike mankind, Jesus accepts us. Even with our flaws. Jesus looked beyond our shortcomings. He looked beyond our perfect imperfection. And what he does, he imparts. Hello, somebody. He imparts his righteousness. Hallelujah. He imputes his godliness. So that one day, oh, bless God. One day, he will present before the entire universe his pearl of great price without spots without wrinkle, without blemish, without any faults. And he will say to all of us, come, come you blessed of my father. Come enjoy your pearl of great price. Enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so today, Jesus gave all to buy our redemption. He gave all and he's preparing all for you. So the question is now, what are you willing to give all for? We have a heaven to obtain. Hello? We have a kingdom to obtain. Let all your effort be to obtain your pearl of great price. How much does Jesus mean to you? Are you willing to make him your pearl of great price? How much does Jesus mean to you? How much is a sacrifice to you? What he has done and what he is doing and what he has in store. 
it is all for you and for me. Don't let his effort be in vain. And only you can decide that. Today, I present before you the kingdom, Jesus and his kingdom as our pearl of great price, as the priceless treasure, that pearl. It is there for your grabbing. Question, would you take it? Would you take it? If it is your desire to obtain your pearl of great price, why don't you stand with me as I offer prayer of dedication and commitment. Even those in your home and those viewing online, you can stand if you're accepting God's pearl of great price, that priceless treasure, the kingdom of heaven. You can stand. If you can't stand, you can just raise your hand. God will see and God will bless you. Join me in prayer. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Our great God of heaven, we thank you, God, for not throwing us away. Thank you, Jesus, for not giving up on us. We were trash, filth, but you came, Jesus. You give all you have. Like that merchant man to buy our redemption. You shed your blood to redeem us. And to the God we are saying, we thank you. We appreciate what you have done. And Lord, we want that pearl of great price that you have for us. You have gone to prepare a place for us. And all of us want to be there. We ask that you will grant us that place. May we continually decide for you. May we be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Christ. Because we know one day, one day, we would hear from your lips, well done, well done. Come be blessed of my Father. Enjoy the kingdom of God. That has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. May none of us here miss that for nothing. So thank you again for this decision. And we ask that you will seal it from time and eternity. Even those who are viewing and those in their homes, I pray that God that they too, their manner of dedication and indication, that you would accept their decision as we live for you until you come. Save us at last. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening. hearing such a wonderful message, we say amen and amen. Our response will be to this hymn, 218, when he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his love and his own. Let's continue blending our voices as we sing this or When he comes, when he comes to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his love and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crowns are adorning, they shall shine.
prepared for the closing benediction. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for blessing us, O oh God. Father, we want to thank you for your guidance and your protection over our lives, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you may continue to bless us and keep us and help, O oh God, that we may be that light that will shine out in the darkness and men and women may see you shining through us and come to call you blessed, O oh God. Thank you and help us to remember to speak not of our own words, but to continue to praise you and to adore you. These are not the mercies we beg in with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In all the nations, in all the